Here is the last class notes video for section 2.4. Example 7. An example 7 is an example between parallel and perpendicular lines. The graph on the left is an example of parallel lines. Two parallel lines or two lines are parallel if the lines never intersect. What they're asking you to do is find the slope of each line. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two points that are right in the crossing. There's a good one. That one's not good. Right here, that would be another one. I'm going to start with this point, and I'm going to say my slope. I'll call this the first line. The slope of the first line is rise over run change in y over change of x and if I start here I notice I go down 3 down 3 then I go to the right 2 go to the right 2 so the slope is negative 3 over 2 you could leave it like that or negative 1.5 if you'd rather use your calculator the second line We'll call that M2. Again, the rise over the run, same thing. And pick two points here, maybe this one and this one. And I'm going to start with point down here. And this time I'm going to rise. So I'm going to go up three. That's a plus three. And then I'm going to go, uh oh, to the left. Remember when I go to the left, it's negative. So negative 2. Notice it's still 1.5. So you notice the slopes for parallel lines are the same. So if I go down here, if two lines with slope n1 and m2 are parallel, if, and I'm just going to say add the first one, if m1 is equal to m2 talk about perpendicular um, now okay perpendicular when two lines are perpendicular what are their slopes you notice that these what does perpendicular mean first of all it means that the angle that of the intersection is going to be 90 degrees or what they call it, if you haven't had geometry a right triangle right like a square right here each one of these these two angles are the same this measure is the same as this measure so that's what it means for be perpendicular but if slopes of two perpendicular lines so I'm gonna pick call this my first one and I'm gonna pick maybe this point and this point I'm not gonna pick that one because it's not in a cross and I'm gonna look at M1 what is M1 rise over run the same thing change in y over change of x. If I start at, we'll start at this point, go down, go down one. And what do we run? Uh, run, <laughs> our change of x is two. So it looks like it's negative one half. Now let's do the second one, m2. Same thing. I'm gonna pick two points, maybe this one, anything that goes to the cross here this one and this time I'm going to rise first so I'm going to rise two and I'm going to run one not the same but if you notice there are different signs one's negative one positive that makes sense because um, this is an increasing line number two and number one is a decreasing line. But the run is the rise and the rise is the run. It's flipped. They call that the negative reciprocal. Or you can say it like this. M1 is the negative flip of M2. So in general, the first one, when they're parallel, the slopes are the same. And the second one, perpendicular, we know one slope 
is what we call the negative reciprocal, which means it's flipped of the other. So now I'd like you to pause and try exercise one, maybe even exercise two. Um, exercise one says, are the lines 3x minus 2y equals 6 and 3y minus 2x equals 12, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? They give a hint. Find the slope of each line by converting the slope into the form y equals b plus mx or mx plus b. So take a moment, see if you can do this, pause, and come back when you're ready to see the solution. Uh, here is the solution. Notice how, um, okay, here's the solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first equation and we're going to solve for y. You're going to subtract the 3x, you're going to divide by negative 2, and you're going to see your slope is in front of the x, so it's 3 halves. We can take our second equation. We can do this without graphing um, and do the same thing. Add the 2x, divide everything by 3, and you get 2 thirds. So the slope, I didn't write that one down, the slope for that one is 2 over 3. So you think, oh, well, they're not the same, so they're not parallel. But they're not, one is not the negative reciprocal. We're missing the negative word, right? We have the reciprocal, they are flipped, but it doesn't have the negative. So it's actually neither. The answer is neither. Now try exercise two. Pause here. If you can get it, great. If not, I'll show you the solution in a second after you pause. Okay, here's the solution to this one. So this one's a little bit more tricky. This one, it says use the point slope form to find the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 20 minus 7x through 5, 8. So what is the slope of this is negative 7, or I wrote negative 7 over 1. I want to write in red here. So if I flip that, remember we need to flip it, so I get 1 over 7, and take the negative of it, the opposite sign, the slope of a line perpendicular to negative 7 is 1 7. So that's the slope I'm going to use for my new perpendicular line. So we're going to use our standard formula that we use, y equals y1 plus m times x minus x1, where the m is 1 7th, and the point x1, y1 is going to be 5 8. So we just plug those in, plug in the 8, plug in the 1 7, plug in the 5, and you get, actually this would be a fine answer, or if you want to get it in the y equals mx plus b form, you can multiply that out, and then you can just add these on your calculator, and you will get that. That's exercise two. Let's go move on to exercise three. So now pause it, try exercise three on the next page. Exercise three is on the next page, page 41, and it says write an equation for the line through four, seven, and one, one. We actually have done this before, in the last section, so there's nothing new here. So go ahead and try that. Pause me and come back when you have solved that one. Here is the solution. So uh, what I did here is um, I used the slope. We're just showing you the solution since it is an exercises where um, the first point is 4, 7, and the second point is 1, 1. Yep, because we went 1 minus 7 and 1 minus 4. And we got the slope as 2. And then we used that same formula we did before, and we just plugged in the 2. And we also plugged in the set um, 7 for, I used this point. Again, this point was my first point. And this point was my second point. So I just used this point for the one that was down here. And I plugged in the 7. 
I plugged in the four and we got our answer. Okay, exact exercise four, write an equation for each of the lines below. So there's three lines here. Uh, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and there's three lines, one going through zero, zero, one horizontal line going through five, and one vertical line going through three. Go ahead and pause and try this one. So I guess I started with the horizontal line. The horizontal line is um, always a y equals, if you remember from our definition above. Oh, I actually have a mistake there. I'll redo that one. Uh, but the horizontal is right. Um, it's y equals for horizontal, and the y is 5. y is always 5. So this is like the point 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5. The vertical line, the vertical line is x equals. That's why I made this mistake there. And this is the vertical line, this one. And so it looks like x is always 3. This is 1, 3, 2, I'm sorry, 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2. x is always 3. Uh, for this line, this is where I did this work. Uh, the um, equation has slope of 5. So I picked two points. I picked these two. And I went up 5 and over 3. And I noticed the B, I didn't have to use that formula we did on the last exercise because we know what the B is. The B is 0. So it was just y equals 5 thirds x plus 0 or just 5 thirds x. Last one to try. Exercise 5. So go ahead and try exercise 5. Pause. And then I'll show you the solution. So pause now and come back when you are done. The intercepts. If you remember what the intercepts were, the x-intercept is when y is 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a 0 for this y. And when the y is 0, 0 over 7 is still 0. So this would just go away. So that's why I have x over 5 equals 1. And I multiply both sides by 5 here. And that's where I got the x equals 5. So we have the point 5 comma 0 is the x-intercept. Similarly, with the y-intercept, we're going to plug in x is 0. So we'll plug in x is 0 here. x over 5 goes away. So you just have y over 7 equals 1. Multiply both sides by 7 and you get a 7. It looks it's easier than it looks, so don't let those fractions um, deter you. Part B. If A and B are non-zero constants, constants, what are the intercepts of the line x over A plus y over B equals 1? The 1 is actually on the other side. It's the same thing, but just with A's and B's. So we're going to do the same thing. You can try it. Pause, and then I'll continue. And before you continue with this video, because um, I have the solution to B and C, um, uh, you can go ahead and do C as well. So I'll show you the solution for B and C at the same time. The C says uh, find the equation for the line given, and you can see there they have a line shown. Find that equation. Okay, are you ready? Here it is. A. Here's, I have it all together. So here's A and B. I mean B and C. Okay, so the A. So I just rewrote the, the equation over here because I didn't like that one over there. So the x-intercept of this is when y is 0. So when y is 0, you're going to plug in 0 here, you get 0 over b, so you would get x over a equals 1, or x equals a. I'll write it there. To find the y-intercept, you plug in x is 0, so you get y over b equals 1, or y equals b. Finally, here's the solution to the last one. I did it down here. Since we've done this before, I'm going to end here.